evening, brothers. What's happening with y'all, man? Listen, I'm so glad y'all tuned in tonight, bro. I've got a word I want to share with you, and I want you to get ready because the Tuesdays to come, brothers are coming back with a powerful word. Starting the series with the brothers, our brotherhood cabinet entitled The Good News. Man, and they got some good news for you. Shout out to all of you all, man, who keep brotherhood alive by sharing uh, the posts, sharing the videos, calling brothers, uh, getting on the prayer line Monday through Friday. Man, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, as a pastor, I am proud of your growth. And the truth of the matter is, some of y'all know, I ain't the only one, some of y'all know that ain't nobody but the Lord that got you on a prayer call Monday through Friday and even on the Tuesday night Zoom call. Listen, I also want to tell you, and uh, we'll have some more details about it. Uh, Prayers and I are working on something along with Brother Michael, uh, and that is we're going to start doing some brotherhood pop-ups. You remember we've been to Apartment C, been to Jeffries, we've been to the Wise Guys. Well, man, we're going to start doing some in-person brotherhood pop-ups where we come in and you know it's always going to be 100. In fact, about it, uh, I had a pastor ask me one time uh, during a pandemic, about four or five months ago. He said, uh, man, I've been hearing about your Zoom call. And brothers on there, he said, man, y'all be on there talking about some real stuff. I said, yeah, man. He said, you think I can bring my brothers? I said, man, um, because I think for many of us, man, this is really where we are. I think as I pray and as I'm open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, I think most brothers are right here. I want to talk today about the right way to seek. The right way to seek. I say the right way because I think most of us are seeking. Whether seeking to be a better man, whether seeking to be a better manager of money, whether seeking to be a better husband, whether uh, seeking to no longer be a player, (laughs) uh, seeking to, to handle business different coming out of the pandemic than you did before. I think many of us, man, are seeking. And and I think that's a good place to be. Listen, it's better to be seeking than to be sinking. And I think a lot of brothers are seeking and celebrate that. Tonight, I want to talk about the right way to seek. Let's pray. Father, in your name, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray that you would bless the brothers tonight. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for us being able to connect by way of technology. I thank you for our president and for all of those who work uh, together in any shape, form, or fashion to make sure that uh, brothers are able to stay connected. We thank God for you uh, using them. We thank God for them making themselves available. In Jesus' name, speak to us. Give us words to live by. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to look at Matthew chapter 6. And and my my objective tonight, brothers, and I won't be long, but my objective tonight is to just help you from the teachings of Jesus the right way to seek. And I didn't, I'm saying him, but, and I believe that him is what we ought to seek according to the scriptures, but then I think that's what works. Well, let me let me let Jesus explain it. Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 is delivering what's called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, many scholars believe that uh, this is not the first time he said this. In fact, about it, many believe that throughout his journey in various ways, he talked about this in some shape, fashion, or form. And that is how those who are part of his kingdom how they would live, how they would flow, how would they get down. Those who are part of his kingdom, how would they deal, interact, treat, handle people and problems? That's the just of of, of what he's sharing. He gets to chapter six and it's as if he is not only, and we know this to be true because he's omniscient, he's aware of the setting He knows their situation, and he knows the state of their mind. 
He's aware of the setting. He knows the time he's living in. And in Jesus' time, uh, it's poverty was way more common than it is now. In fact, about it, uh, you travel to certain third world countries. What we call poverty in America is living high on the hog in some third world countries. But Jesus understanding the setting, knowing the situation that many people he's talking to have been oppressed by the Roman government and then double oppressed by religion. Man, if I had time to deal with that, because if there's anything the black man has experienced, he's been oppressed by the Roman government uh, or by the government and oppressed double by religion. And Jesus comes in the midst of this kind of setting and says to this situation and says to these people that I've got a new kingdom. And don't trip, my kingdom ain't of this world. See, this world, uh, y'all kingdom got high off. In, in this world, there are big shots and, 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 and you know, nobodies. And in, 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 in y'all kingdom, on this world, y'all got ballers and busters. He said, but it ain't like that in my kingdom. And they're, they're excited about hearing him. In uh, some cases, you read where they followed him for days, listening to him talk. Man, you talking about influence and impact and and so knowing the setting and knowing the state of their mind that to really grasp on this stuff he's talking about will turn up the worry in them so he starts talking in verse 25 telling them uh don't 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 worry about nothing don't, don't worry about nothing don't don't worry about anything and he uses analogies of how he takes care of the birds and he talks about the lily in the fields and how they are, they are so beautiful that Solomon and all of his wealth and wisdom never touched them in appearances. And, and he makes his way down with that and, and he gets to verse 33 and he gives them an alternative. He gives them another option. He says, don't worry, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, man. And all these things shall follow you. Now let's clear up something before we go any further. When he says all these things, he's talking about the things he's mentioned earlier in the passage. That's just keeping things in context. And you know what context is? Context is uh, drinking uh, in the Kool-Aid and knowing the flavor. And, and so he says, he says those things. What are those things? The necessities of life. Those things that were essential for that crowd at that setting, at that time, to be able to make it, to survive, to sustain, and even having the ingredients to succeed, uh, succeed rather, the necessities of life is what he's talking about when he says these things will be added. Now, let me tell you why that's so important. Because if you got what you need, you can work what you need to get what you want. If you got what you need, y'all can have that. Uh huh. Go on, you can have that. You can go ahead. If you got what you need, you can work to get what you want. Come on, man. I done had conversations with y'all. I ain't talking about nothing but a righteous hustle. When you've got what you need, you if you work it right, you can get what you want. He says, so I'm going to add that to you. So I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to be caught up with the how wheels and the what ifs of life. What if this happened? How will I handle this? Don't, don't get caught up with the what ifs and the how will. He says, but here's what I'd rather you do. He says, I'd rather you seek first. He says, but, which is the first thing I want to tell you in terms of seeking. Well, I'm sorry. Let me define what seeking means. Seeking is in the present imperative here in the Greek language, and it means to continuously pursue. It means to make it your mission. Let me see if I can't can see if I can't paint this. And this is why, you know, the Zoom call is for sure enough real cats. Let me see if I can't paint this picture of seeking. Uh, you remember the first time you saw her? It's been some years now, and you, you know, you 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 you've been with her for a while, but the, the first time you saw her. And I don't care how confident you were. I don't care how how uh, bold and how smooth you thought you were. 
You have to decide you were going to make a move. You have to decide, and I'm talking about <laughs> it's something you really wanted. Now, I ain't talking about something that came on, you know, that, you know, that some of you niggas starting to line already. That ain't never happened to me. No, come on now. I I'm talking about th that dying piece that you remember how consistent and persistent you were. Not, 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 you, you, you wasn't forcing yourself like you were desperate, but your actions were very clear that you wanted to get with it. When Jesus talks about seeking, he talks about seeking, being consistent with your passion, being determined with your focus, wanting it bad enough. And I think, man, what happens is we are so consumed with getting the all things. We're so passionate about seeking the all things that we wind up constantly worrying. But the end to the worry is the right way to seek, and the seeking has to be him. The pursuit has to be him, not his hand, but his heart. In other words, you ain't seeking him so he can hook you up. No, man. <laughs> no, come on, man. You ain't seeking him so, so he can, you know, he can look out for you, put something on the bag. No, you're seeking him so that you would know him. You would know his way of life. And as a result of you seeking him, the stuff that it takes for you to succeed, the things you need to make it are going to happen to you. It's a, it's a, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's Goldie's line in the Mac when he tells Richard Pride, he says, uh, uh, Man, see, cats think the, the goal for the woman is the body. No, the body, of course, he didn't say body, but for those who, who may, you know, I can't keep it too raw. He, he says, the goal ain't her body. The goal is her mind. If I get her mind, then the body is a friend's benefit. Jesus is saying, listen, you trying to chase the body. And I'm trying to get you to chase my heart. Because if you chase my heart, I'm going to get your mind. And buddy, when I get your mind, I'm going to cause you to live a life that you were intended to. So seek me. Pursue me. Now, let me look at this real quick. Pursue me, he says, but. Which means, instead of worry, why don't you worship? I'm going to pursue him if I'm going to. Go after him. That involves worship. Now, don't think worship because I know and it's sad though. When we think worship, we only think of actions within church with our hands lifted and tears rolling down our eyes. And no doubt that will happen at times, depending on how the Lord moves with you in your mind and in your life. Because I've known brothers who've never cried, but they've laughed. I've known brothers. Uh, uh, one brother, spirit was so high one day with Prophet Blitz. He walked outside and said, man, something feel funny with me. So there, there are various ways. That, but when I'm talking about worship, I'm talking about instead of worry. Now, worry is a mind thing. Worship. Instead of having your mind on what might happen with you not having stuff, shift your mind on a God who's taking care of you with or without the stuff you thought you needed. Shift your mind from worrying about what they going to say and shift your mind on what he has said. They're going to say you'll never change, but he said you're forgiven. She may say you're a low-down, dirty, rotten dog, but he calls you a son of his. Shift your mind. Stop worrying about uh, uh, whether or not they will approve of you. There's a brother who's listening to me right now. Man, you holding back some wonderful things and opportunities in your life because you're consumed with whether or not if you step out, if somebody's going to affirm you or co-sign it. No, 
God has given you everything you need. And if this message serves for nobody else, it's for you, bro. Go on and step out. Don't worry about what they may think. Worry about the opportunity he has afforded you. Watch this now. Let me tell something to you. God never presents an opportunity to a person he doesn't think who's ready for it. He would be a bad father to open up a door and not know you're capable of walking through it. So, so seek ye, seek, seek. Don't worry, but seek. Don't worry, but worship. Shift your mind from off the stuff that worries you and focus your mind on the God who's taking care of you. Wait, watch this. I with my boy uh, this week came, flew in, hang out with me and do some studio time. Wrote a new book, uh, 99% Woman. And I got to be honest with you, he was reading couple of chapters and I said, man, he's about to mess up. And then that last chapter I heard brought it all home. Power to the people. But but wonderful book. Uh, we're going to talk about it tomorrow night with our sister. So we definitely, uh, brothers, look on out for that, Bishop Brister. And, and so we were talking, when we talk about this issue of of, of, of your mind uh, of being in, in, in certain uh, a place. One of the things uh, we were talking uh, yesterday about, he said, what you see and what you hear impacts how you think. And you see, man, one of the devil's objectives is to cause you and I to consume our minds with what we see and what we hear over against what God has shown us. Bishop, what you talking about? Man, God has shown you in the midst of you being no good. He got you. Man, God has shown you in the midst of your disobedience that he covering you. God, God has shown you that when you were down to your last dime, and it ain't because you didn't have the money, it's because you messed up the money. God has come through for you. Shift your mind off of worry and put it on worship. But seek. But then he says, seek ye first. Oh, wait, wait. Now this, this is big. He says, I don't want you to worry. I want you to worship. He says, and I don't want to just be a priority. I want to be the first priority. Old tight. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Now, that's that's a big challenge there, bro. I, we're getting ready to get out of here. That, that's a big challenge there. Let me tell you why. Because it's one thing to have to consider others when things are tight. When, 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 when you're worried about stuff, is. It's, it's one thing to consider others. But now he's saying, I don't want you just to consider me. I want you to consider me first. Before you do anything, I want my kingdom and my righteousness to be first. What in the world? <laughs> first, you, 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 you want to be. The top priority, no, because the top priority can be shared. You got wife and kids. I, I don't want top priority. I want first. You know, when God made Eve, him and Adam had already been in fellowship. God made Adam and then made Eve, as you well know, because God wants to show I want to be first. In a man's life. Now, first, what does it mean putting him first? Best way I can illustrate it is before a plane takes off, though it has all the passengers, all of the bags, the crew is in place, the pilot's in place, everybody's buckled in. Before it takes off, it has to check in with the top. It's not gonna make a move until it check in. Having him first says, Lord, what you think. What you say, what you want about where I'm at in this area in my life, I want to come and holler at you first. Nobody else's word comes before yours. Nobody else's way comes before yours in every of your area of my life. Now, the reason why I'm saying you're first because I'm seeking this, I'm going after this, meaning I'm not running. 
to my partners about how to handle my girl. Now, I'm not saying we ain't going to talk about it. But before I even talk to them, God, let me holler at you. And I'm hollering at you because I'm about to choke her. I'm hollering at you because you made her and you gave her to me. God bless you. That's, that's, amen, brother. Put that. I know that was your word, wasn't it? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking you first. Make him a priority, he says, and then his kingdom and righteousness. His kingdom and righteousness. His kingdom and righteousness. Don't worry. Worship. Don't just consider me. Consider me first. I want you to consider first my kingdom, my righteousness. I know you got some things you need, and I'm going to see that at the happens. But seek me first. What do you think? And let's just look at this from a Let's, let's look at this from, from, from a real brother perspective. What would you withhold from a woman who makes it perfectly clear? Now, of course, you're a man worth your soul. You ain't no foolish, you know, immature man, but a real man. What would you withhold? From a woman who makes sure you're first. What, what, what would you not do for her? He says, don't worry, worship. He says, just don't consider me, consider me first. His kingdom is righteous. And next week we're going to pick that up. All right, man, I love y'all. Thank y'all for listening, bro. And if this helps, please share it. All right? It's on you, press. Remember, you're alive, you're important, and you're changing. I holler. Peace. My